are new to cruising, or even if you've cruised before but you're heading to a new destination, one of the hardest decisions is knowing which ports to book an excursion for and which ones to explore on your own. We recently returned from a 14-day cruise on the Morella Discovery 2 around the southern and western Caribbean, but the whole of our first week's itinerary was changed just three days before we flew to Jamaica, which meant that all of the research we'd done for the places we were going to visit was redundant, and we had to start afresh pretty quickly. It also meant the excursions that we'd already booked were cancelled and we couldn't book alternatives until we were on board the ship. In this video I'm going to share with you how we did our port research and why we decided to stay in some and book excursions for others. The first two destinations on our new itinerary were Cartagena in Colombia and Colón in Panama. So stick around to find out which port we decided to stay and explore and which one we gave a miss and booked an excursion for instead. Our original itinerary took in Honduras, Guatemala, Belize and mainland Mexico. So Mark and I set about finding out as much as we could about each of the ports we were going to be visiting. We'd not been to any of these places before, so we had no idea what to expect. We knew that some ports can be pretty industrial and not that pretty, whereas others were close to busy towns or were custom built for the tourist industry. But we didn't know which were which. We booked our cruise about three months earlier, so we had loads of time to choose and being only second time cruisers, we weren't quite confident enough yet to go solo and book independently of the cruise line. Now that we've been on a couple of cruises, I think in the future we'll feel more confident to book our own excursions separately with independent tour companies. In order to find out what was at each port, we relied on our trusty best friend, YouTube. There are literally hundreds of YouTubers sharing cruise tips, port tours, ship tours, etc. So we knew we'd find exactly what we were looking for. And I have to stop here and give a huge big shout out to some of our favorite YouTubers who we've followed pretty religiously now for the last few months. We love Paul and Carol Love to Travel. They're about our age and they're very down to earth and very real. They're also pretty funny and I love the relationship that they have and the banter between them. We also love Emma Cruises, and although Emma is way, way younger than us and probably prefers a completely different style of cruise, what we love about her is her detailed videos and her common sense tips. And I recently fell in love with these guys too, Ben and Dave Cruise. They genuinely have me laughing out loud with their antics, but they have some of the best quality video production I've seen in the cruise vlogger world and they're incredibly knowledgeable about all things cruising. And our final shout out goes to Tips for Travellers host Gary Benbridge, who I would probably call the cruise guru of YouTube. His preferences when it comes to cruising are probably the closest to ours, but like Emma Cruises, his knowledge and tips are practical, detailed, and really well researched. Anyway, getting back to our research, we found lots of videos that gave us a tour of the port, so we were able to decide if we felt there would be enough in port to keep us busy and happy, or if we'd be better off choosing an excursion. And we basically did that for every port stop on our itinerary. We went to the TUI app and we checked out which excursions were available, and we were able to book the ones we wanted in advance, which was also great, but, as I already mentioned, in future we'd possibly look to book independently. Now of course, all of our hard work and dedicated research went out of the window when we got the call from TUI on the Friday before we were due to travel on the Monday to say that problems with the ship's thrusters meant we weren't going to be able to get into the planned ports and we would now be visiting a different set of ports in a different itinerary. We would be visiting Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica and Port Royal 
rather than Honduras, Guatemala, Belize, and mainland Mexico. Now we did get an almost instant refund on our canceled excursions, which may be one benefit of booking direct through the cruise line. So something maybe to consider for the future. Our first port of call was Cartagena in Colombia. And having done our YouTube research, we decided that we'd like to take a chance on staying in port and not book an excursion. And this proved to be an absolutely brilliant decision. We both loved Cartagena. It was colorful and busy and the people were incredibly friendly. As soon as we left the ship, we were met with this beautiful eco area with exotic birds and wildlife. We took a gentle stroll through the nature reserve, trying to avoid being attacked by the local parrots, but enjoying watching the flamingos, the peacocks, and even a giant sleeping anteater before we jumped in a taxi to take us into the old town. A taxi costs around $10 per couple. Actually, it costs around $10 per person. And we shared a mini cab, like a minibus cab, with a group of people, which actually meant we only paid $5 each. The taxi dropped us off near the walls of the old town. And the first thought we had was that it was beautiful. We were met with the Castillo de San Felipe de Barajas. I probably haven't pronounced that properly, which is apparently the greatest fortress ever built by the Spaniards in any of their colonies, according to Lonely Planet. And it dates back to around 1650. The old town reminded us a lot of Barcelona with colorful buildings, including churches, plazas, and mansions with overhanging balconies. And we absolutely loved just leisurely wandering around the streets enjoying the sunshine and the weird and wonderful artwork everywhere. We'd eaten a big breakfast on board the ship before we disembarked, so we weren't hungry, but we did grab a Colombian beer and a little courtyard bar, and we sat watching the world go by. Although we did get a bit of a shock when the bill arrived and said it was $23 for those two small beers, but the bartender reassured us that that was actually Colombian dollars, and it was only around eight American dollars. In actual fact, our two beers showed up on our bank statement as just over four pounds, so way better than we expected. We continued our strolling around the vibrant streets and met this wonderful lady in traditional Colombian dress who very kindly offered to let us take a photo with her for a tip, of course. And I have no idea how you keep a basket full of bananas on your head. As our time in Cartagena was coming to an end, we headed back to the place where the taxi had dropped us off. And we got a cab back to the ship where we got to again wander through the nature reserve, visiting our not so friendly parrots. We even bartered with the taxi cab on the way back and managed to get back for $5 each, even though there was just the two of us. I think it should have been around $10 really. Back on ship, we checked out the cruise news to see how we could spend the rest of the day which included some dancing with Alexi and Irina, the pro dance teachers on ship, followed by a meal in Gallery 47, which is the Italian restaurant included in the cruise fair. Then we had a trip down to the Broadway theater to take in a show, then off to bed while the captain and his crew sailed us safely overnight to Panama. When we arrived in Panama, we were stopping at a port called Cologne. Now according to Lonely Planet, Cologne is the city that Panama forgot and as we'd found out from our research that certainly looked to be the case. The buildings looked run down and the port looked to be in a state of decay. We'd also read reports that not only was there not much to do but a few people had said they didn't feel too safe. So we decided this would be a good port to miss and we'd book an excursion instead. Chewy had a number of different tours to choose from for our Cologne stop, one of which was the opportunity to take a boat along the old Panama Canal, taking in a couple of the old locks. This really appealed to me as it seemed like the perfect opportunity to grab a few bragging rights for the future by being able to say we'd sailed on the Panama Canal. It did mean though that we had a pretty long journey by coach from the ship to our canal boat, which was actually a canal boat. It was more like a passenger ferry. When we got there, actually the trip was memorable and I'm so glad we did it 
But there were a few things we were a bit disappointed with. Firstly, the boat was pretty poorly designed for tourists. The main cab, where the pilot was steering the boat from, was near the front and in the very centre of the ship, which meant the majority of us couldn't see ahead of us. We had a great tour guide who was giving us lots of great information about what was around us, but unless you were one of the few lucky enough to be in front of the cab, it was all a little meaningless. I did manage to find some space at the front of the boat so that I could take some video, but I didn't feel it was fair to stay there as other people were also wanting to see what was happening. The second disappointment was lunch. There were around 200 of us on the boat and we had to queue in line to be served, which took a very long time and meant that those who were served last were left with pretty slim pickings. You could, however, grab tins of Coke or Sprite and bottles of water any time you wanted, which were kept nice and cold in vats of iced water, which was just as well as it was incredibly hot and sunny and there was virtually no shade on board the boat. We were on the boat for around four hours and the seats weren't particularly great for sitting on for long periods of time. They were those sort of stacking plastic seats you often see in village halls, so not the most comfortable. I'm guessing there were a fair number of numbums by the end of the day. And there was a lot of waiting around at the locks as we were waiting for the ship behind to catch us up so we could pass through the lock together. To be honest, that wasn't a problem at all and it was fascinating seeing just how close to the canal edges the ship would get. Watching the lock doors open as we passed through was fascinating and I was able to get right up to the front of the ship to get an unobscured view, which was wonderful. We could see huge container ships passing along the new Panama Canal, which are way too big to use the original canal. We finished up near Panama City, where we boarded the coach for the journey back to Colón and to the ship. This excursion wasn't cheap. It cost us £124 each, and if I'm honest, I didn't feel it was actually worth that much. We did find out that it costs the ships a fair whack to travel through the canal, and I'm sure some of the high cost was to cover that toll fee. But the plastic seats, the obscured views from the boat, and the lacklustre lunch certainly didn't fit the high price tag. We were glad we booked it though and got out of Cologne itself. Of course, we may have had a brilliant day staying in port and we'll never know, but we were happy with our decision. And this was certainly not one I'd have wanted to book independently, just because it was such a long day and I'd have been worried we might not get back to the ship in time. At least when you book with the cruise line, the ship won't leave without you which is not so if you book independently. After another two hour coach ride, we embarked the ship again, ready to get changed, threw a few moves on the dance floor before heading to the main dining room, 47 degrees for dinner, then taking in another Broadway show. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a flavor of both Cartagena and the Panama Canal as well as a peek into our thought processes around whether or not to book an excursion or stay in port. If you've never cruised before, but you fancy it, check out this video, which shows a little bit about our journey to get to the ship in Jamaica, including a pretty noisy and interesting coach ride to the port, as well as the embarkation process we experienced, and a first look around the ship. And if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, I'd love you to give it a like. If you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, you'll be first to hear when I upload other videos. Look out for our day in Havana, Cuba with all the fabulous old cars and ridiculously oversized shirt sleeves, which is coming up in the next few weeks. And also a trip down the hip strip in Montego Bay. See you soon. Take care.